Today's review is going to be a little different. Instead of teasing you with the hottest new camera that you can't even buy yet, we are going to be looking at a camera from 2014. Yep, that's right. This camera is almost five years old now, which might be older than a lot of my viewers. Why would we look at such an outdated piece of technology? You're about to find out. Welcome to Lognosis! So I got the idea for today's topic because I often see people online asking if I'm going to start vlogging, what camera should I use? Which is a crazy question because there are thousands of cameras out there. A lot of vloggers actually use their smartphone as their camera. I mean, the best camera is the one that's with you. And most people always have their smartphone with them, so put two and two together and there you go. Not to mention that the quality of video on smartphones today is amazing. If you've been watching my channel, you know that I've been using the Samsung Galaxy S7 for a lot of my vlogging needs. However, there are times when today's smartphone just doesn't do the trick. For example, if you notice, the background in today's video is a little bit out of focus, while I am in perfect focus. This is called depth of field, and you will see a lot of professional movie makers and TV shows use this technique to bring attention to the subject that you're supposed to be watching. But basically, smartphones today have really, really tiny little sensors, which make this depth of field effect almost impossible. Not to mention that they usually come with a very wide angle lens, which by nature keeps everything in focus. Another detail to consider is low light performance. Now, on a smartphone like the Galaxy S7, I was able to capture a lot of low-light scenes. However, you've probably noticed that the image gets really super grainy, and you lose a lot of the color details. With a camera such as this, A, you have that larger sensor to allow more light in and make your video footage look better, and B, you can choose which lens you need based upon the situation. And some of these lenses let in a lot more light than any smartphone lens currently does. Now I know I know I'm throwing a lot of technical stuff at you here, but I'm I'm trying to keep it as easy to understand as possible. If this is all over your head or your eyes are glazing over, I will simplify things for you and tell you to consider using the Sony A5000, which is the camera that is being used to record what you're seeing right now. The other reason why I would recommend taking a look at this camera, well, what if I told you, you could pick up this exact camera for about $200. Deals can be found, but the competition on these things is fierce. I suggest entering the name here in the search bar, sorting by time, newly listed, buying format, buy it now, I don't recommend auctions in this case because you will be sniped last minute and after losing about 10 of these auctions you will become easily discouraged. From here, just scroll down and as soon as you see one that looks good, this one, oh my gosh, this one, this is a good price. I paid a lot more than this. So here's your proof that this method works. You could have this camera right now with a lens and be vlogging. Let's see if it's still available, actually. Oh, no. Look at that. The listing is no longer available. Let's click on it and see. See, somebody was using the same technique and just snatched it right out from under us. The seller has 100% feedback and a lot of it. And the images look really good. I mean, that, that was a steal. Somebody got really lucky on this one. This is my A5000. As you can see, it's a really nice compact size. Much easier to carry than a traditional DSLR. One of the noteworthy features for vloggers is this screen actually articulates and opens up to face you. You can easily frame your shot this way. 
the lens is detachable and you can buy a variety of lenses. There's that APS-C sized sensor. And there is where the magic happens. That is the button you push to start vlogging. This is the 16 to 50 millimeter zoom lens. It's usually included with the kit. When you turn the camera on, you notice that it does extend a little bit. Zoom in, zoom out. It does change a little bit, but it's nothing too drastic. There is a pop-out flash for still photography, if you're into that. Now, you might be thinking, this all sounds fine and dandy, but there's got to be a catch, right? I'm glad you asked. This model camera has a reputation for overheating. But it's luck of the draw. It all depends upon which unit came off the assembly line that day. Roll the dice, you might get lucky and not have any problems. Mine, not so lucky. So what I did, I removed the sticker that used to be here from the factory. And as you can see, behind it, there's metal with holes, which allow a lot of heat to escape. In addition, people recommend keeping the screen propped open to allow for more airflow. Another disadvantage, there's no microphone input. You are forced to use the built-in microphones, which are located here and here. Even with these issues, you'd be hard pressed to find a camera this good at this price point. Now, how about we see some of that goodness firsthand? Let's go, come on. Take a nice picture. Oh, I'm doing some video. Oh, it's doing... motion pictures. Motion it's it's the latest in technology. Well, we get paid a lot more. <laughs> oh, I've oh. got the moving picture things. Moving picture never shows. Take, never take. Yeah, it's a fad. Nah.
Now, let's test out the video recording capabilities of this camera in low light and night settings. It actually does a lot better than I had expected. By the way, if these scenes look at all familiar, that's because I used them in my zombie dumpster diving episode. If you haven't seen it yet, you gotta check it out. Wow, that's some amazing quality. It's hard to believe that for around $200, you can have video quality like that. What do you think of this camera? Perhaps you own an A5000 or even an A5100, A6000, A6300. What's your personal opinion on these cameras? Please leave a comment below. And if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to my channel. It allows you to stay in the loop. You can choose to receive a notification every time I release a new video. And it unlocks the comment section so that you can communicate with other YouTubers. Anyway, that about wraps things up for today. I thank you for watching, and stay tuned for my next video. Ow. Ow.